Dave here. How are you? Today is the 14th of July. I nearly said August. Uh, July. It's cold, uh, very cold. You'll notice that I'm down this end of the workshop and the reason being I've got this. It's my friend. It's keeping me warm. It's about three degrees outside. I'm guessing it's quite cold in Canberra. I guess you've had snow. Uh, I noticed in the chat down the side here that there's a few people are saying that uh, they weren't getting the notification, uh, you know, with a countdown waiting to happen. I don't understand. Uh, anyway, I will check that kind of stuff out. As I said, I'm not a YouTube uh, whiz. I'm Dave in his shed having some fun. So if you've had some issues, let us know in the chat. And if you've come in through Facebook, let us know in the chat because I try and do Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube. So if it's not happening, it's not happening. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we all we all tend to think that YouTube's been here forever. It's only a very very new thing. So here we go. What's on the show today? Lucky looking into the future every week. Yes, of course. We're 17 hours ahead of you, I think. There, Rick. Um, didn't get a notification uh, with the countdown. Uh, I came in from Facebook, came in through Facebook, round the world, uh, sound and video, all good. Excellent. Okay. As I say, I'll look into what happens next week. You should be able to see the numbers and thumbs up and everything. If you wanted to give me a thumbs up, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, add my space and Ella Vista to the list. I, don't, I haven't done that. I haven't done But anyway, I'll, I'll have a look at that. All right. So this week on the, sharp, on the show, on the sharpen? On the show, uh, sharpen a, wood, a wooden trying plane and try and fit. Now, this is a trying plane and this is a jack plane. I'll tell you the differences between those as well and using my reference book, which is um, R.A. Salomon, Dictionary of Woodworking Tools. I use this book extensively when I was doing what's in Arthur's Toolbox series, 30 videos on all of this stuff. And it's a fascinating series. I like to go back and watch it myself because it was all early days for me. And also it was a learning curve for me. And I don't know about you, but I tend to forget things as I'm going along and I need a refresher every couple of years. So I, I check it out and see what's happening. All right, next thing is show us your rack. <laughs> okay, show us your rack. My clamp rack build continues. Uh, show us yours. I need to see pictures of your rack. Now, I don't care if it's just one clamp hanging on the wall. It can be on the floor. Doesn't matter. If that's how you store your stuff, I know there's people that have floor drobes instead of wardrobes. So maybe you have a, a floor rack. I don't know. Some people have said that they keep them in drums. Some people have got them on really, really nice fancy uh, racks on the walls. And some people just throw them in drawers. I need you to send me some pictures and I will throw those up on the stream next week. I'm really, really keen to do this. I want to create a nice slideshow. We'll put some nice music to it. Uh, it won't have anyone's names on it. It will just show up all the different types of clamp racks. There are. Don't throw them on my Facebook page. Send them in to me. Uh, email them in to me, davestantonfans at gmail.com. It'll be so much fun. I'm not going to show you my rack. Oh, well, sorry. I kept my shirt on. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to show you the rack that's on the wall yet because I want to do a little bit of a video on how I produced it. I did a little bit of teasing on uh, Instagram and a couple of pictures in Facebook, but I want to wait till I've got it totally finished. It's looking fantastic. I love it, but it's not quite there yet. So there's a couple of little tweaks. You know what it's like when you make something and you, uh, you think, yeah, that's great. And then you look at it a week or so later and you go, I should have done this. So that's, that's where I'm at with this. But it's nearly, nearly there. Next thing, dado stacks revisited. Which one is right for you? Now, Bob Macko got in touch with me during the week. And this is what I encourage you to do as well. And he said, Dave, I, I want to buy a dado stack. He says, it's a bit confusing. I want to do box joints with it. And I want to know which one to get because there's a few out there. And I will go through that in a couple of minutes. Uh, viewers, homemade bandsaw. Now, remember I, last week I showed you how to change the blade on a bandsaw? And I had a couple of people correcting me here and there, which is fine. You know, that's, that's great. Um, and if you could, uh, your rack is in your mind's eye still, is it, Stephen? <laughs> of course it is. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, where was I? You distracted me with your rack there, Stephen, even though it's probably very well sculpted. Uh, homemade bandsaw, that's right. Now, I have one gentleman who has sent pictures. Let's have a look at that now. Michael Jamison. Now, this is interesting. Michael got the plans from woodgears.com. This is Matthias Wandel's um, webpage. And he sent me in some pictures. So I have a slideshow here that I thought I might share with you. And whilst it's running, I will read it. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Michael Jamison, this is my first machine that I've ever made. For those that may comment that they don't have a bandsaw, it is possible with a few dollars for a set of plans. If, Mathi if Matthias sees this, he may make a comment that I broke the first rule. He said, do not use plywood. I didn't have much to lose other than a bit of ply if it didn't work. So we trust uh, we must have good hardwood ply in Australia because it worked a treat. It has some issues, a slight twist, but the blade tracks okay with a slight wobble to the top wheel. <laughs> That's, that's scary already. No rubber tires as they perished and I didn't replace them. I hope this can give someone some inspiration. Cheers. Love what you do. Michael. I'll come back to this picture here because it's a bit bland just looking at a black screen. So what do you think? I think that's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Now while we're throwing up some pictures of, uh, of what's been happening, have you ever thought about making, building a bandsaw? When I first started watching Matthias, he's a crazy man, crazy Canadian. Uh, the first thing I saw him do was pull a jointer together or, or a thickness or whatever and build a jointer with it out of plywood. And I thought this guy is destined to be in the emergency department at the local hospital. <laughs> but he struggled on and he's just, he's, he's a genius. What more can I say? This guy has got such an engineering background and also with uh, electronics. He's, he's brilliant. Uh, Okay, so where we got? I'm far north Queensland, uh, so it might just be popping in. Is that right, Janet? Janice? Um, Paul, that's a great band. So yes, I've considered it. Time, Paul. Exactly right. That's the thing. So you either build something for yourself, you've got plenty of time and not much dollars, or it doesn't matter about your financial situation. That should be okay. But... Uh, you know, the price of bandsaws these days isn't a lot. So if you, if you don't have much time, maybe it's going to be more economical for you to just go out and buy one. All right. Now, also, while I've got some viewers things happening here, I met, I met a couple of people at the Timber Tools and Woodworking Show. Oh, sorry, Timber Tools and Artisans Show. I've got to get that name right. The show's on in Melbourne soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that one if you're in Australia. Anyway, Timber Tools and Artisans. I got the name wrong last week. I'm sorry about that. All right, so I met a few, I met a lot of people at the show. It was fantastic. And, you know, a few people bought the benches, which was one of the reasons I was there, but mostly to see people and, uh, and, and share the information that I have, which is what I like to do. Now, when I was there, I had a, a, a dad and his young son come up to see me. And this is Sally Happenen. Now, I don't know if they know that uh, I'm going to show you this picture, but it was sent in to me during the week. And it was an absolutely fantastic photo. And I'm so happy that these things happen. So it, here's, the, here's the story and I'll flick over to the photo. It says, uh, Evening Dave, hope you have been well. I wanted to get in touch and thank you for making one little boy very happy at the Sydney Woodworking Show. Please see the attached image. My son Emil still has that shaving. See that shaving he's got in his hand there? Dave shaving, he calls it, with him and wants to be a woodworker like me and you. Thank you again. All the best. Suli and Emil. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Made my day. You know, you get people send stuff in to me and it's great. You know, you read them and you, you enjoy having it. And every now and then there'll be something pops up and you go, you just sit back in your chair and think, well, it's worth it. It's all worth it. I, you know, it's so nice. Stephen, tools are cheaper now in relative terms to they were 30, 40 years ago. Indeed, indeed. John, you thought it was a great show. Paul, you think that's great. So do I. And Janice, and that is an awe moment. You know, that's what I thought. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, now, Derek, it's not to say that I wasn't happy to see you at the show either when you rocked up, shook my hand and everything. Oh, that's great. And I've got a little thing that you made and sent to me, and it'll be in the show today. So here we go. Next thing, we were going to talk about dado stacks. So I have a couple here, and Chris was making comment 
that he's got this one. This is the CMT. And also, I've got another one, which is the Torquetta, or Torquata, whatever you want to call it. Now, what is the difference between the two of them? The CMT is designed for people that don't want to do box joints. These are totally designed to have very sharp blades on the outside that will actually leave a dent. So the, the side of your trench will be perfect because the blade is shearing through the, the, the top surface absolutely perfectly. But the downside of that is there's going to be a wedge shape at the bottom and then it'll go kind of flat, doesn't care too much, down again and then up. Now, as I say, if you want to do furniture where you've got a face frame all the way around or it's a stopped dado, which means that you won't see the end of the dado, these are what you get. If you want to do box joints, or if your dado is going to track right the way through to the front of your shelving unit or whatever you're making, you don't get that one. Do not get the CMT if you're going to go that way. You get the Torcata, or Torqueta, whatever you want to call it. Why? It's a flat top stack, which means it's dead level right the way across. Sharp, crisp edges. So none of this kind of dented in. I'm going to draw it on a piece of paper for you because I think it's going to make it a whole lot easier. The, the next question is going to be whether or not you'll be able to see it. Okay. See that? Looks like Batman. His little ears poking up. That is what the CMT does. Those two sections are for cutting straight through the, the laminates. The Torcata, none, none of those little ears. So if, if you're doing box joints, where well, you want to see the edge, and it does a decent job on the edge as well. Now, also I've had someone say to me, Dave, I can't find these on Carbotech's website. Now, I'm not promoting Carbotech here. I'm letting, just giving you information. I'll give you some inside goss. Carbotech does not and will not put these on their website. The reason being, it's not their product. Timbercon is the people, are the people that stock it. But because I got in touch with Carbotech at, at work, I said, look, you guys are crazy. We can't just have this one stack. We need this one as well for people that want to do box joints. So they got it in, but they didn't get a lot, but they do have them. So all you have to do is give them a call and ask for them. Say, so Dave said, you've got the Torcadas there, so they do this one and the six millimeter flat top saw blade. So both of these, they, they stock, not a lot, as I say, but they do it as a service for customers that are in the store and want that difference to be able to do box joints with. Now you can do box joints with a router table as well if you want to. Uh, is a dado stack better than a router? In If you need to do a whole lot of dados and rebates and you don't have a, you know, a lot of time lying around, the dado stack is going to be quicker. So much quicker. A lot, lot quicker. But again, I like to do my box joints with a spiral up tungsten cutter in my router table. That's just me. Brian, sure, Torcutter also does Imperial and Metricals as well. Okay, um, there you go. I, I'm trying to answer questions as we're going along. How's the time? A quarter past. So Bob, I hope that answers your question for you. Uh, if anyone else, if you've got questions along those kind of lines where you, you want to know what product is being sold and, and the purpose of that product. And you see there's two that look at the same, but there might be some difference. Just ask me and I'll see if I can find out for you if I don't know. If I can find out, I will let you know and I'll also share that information with people on the show. Excellent, Paul, thank you. Now, what are we gonna do next? The next thing I think is the trying plane. I'll just have to get Batman wings back up here and read the sheet. So we've done the clamp racks, as I say, send me pictures in to davestantonfans at gmail.com. Please, please, please do it. Do it now while, while you're watching the show. You know, don't, don't run away and go out to the shed and take a photo. You stay here. 
<laughs> but when the show is over, I want to see heaps. I want my email box to be flooded. I would need you. Look, everyone's got a clamp. There's not a biggie. I'm not going to put your name on it. I just want to see the pictures. Don't send me a heap. One picture each. Send them in to me. I'll do a massive big slideshow and we'll throw it up. Okay? Bob, just what you needed to know. Great. Now, if I don't get any pictures, I'm not going to do it. If I get one or two, I'm not going to do it. I need a lot of pictures. So please have a think about it. As I said, I'm not going to put your name on it. You're not going to be embarrassed if, if you feel as though you're not up to scratch as far as you know everyone else has got all of these lovely clamps. That's not going to come into it. I need your picture of your clamp in a clamp rack of some sort. Have I made myself clear? <laughs> all right, there we go. So the next thing, Deo Stacks, all done. Viewers Homemade Bandsaw. All done. Picture of uh, Emil. That's a, I love that picture. I'm going to show it to you again because it's just, it was great. This is what the shows are all about. It's trying to stop the generations that know about what to do uh, dying off. Look, I'm an old, <laughs> old character and I want that young guy there to go forwards in life and, you know, be amazed with, with things like this. He, he's probably never seen a wooden hand plane. That's, this is one of the reasons I do this show. I, I, want, I, want, I want this not to die out. I, I don't want this kind of uh, heritage that we all have. You know, I, I try and cater to this. I also try and cater with the CNC. So I, I, I'm trying to give you as broad a spectrum of information as I can. So here we go. Well, I bought my DeWalt 8-inch Dado set from Amazon last year for minus $122. Is that what you said, Ron? Oh no, $422. <laughs> Good. Okay, so here we go. The next thing is going to be cleaning up the blades. Now, I don't know if you saw during the week, I popped a little thing on Instagram um, where I was using this trying plane across the top of some plywood. Now I use this because there was no um, chatter or, or kind of metal to plywood vibration. This thing slid absolutely beautifully across the plywood. Pardon me, it's doing end grain and also long grain in plywood. So it, it just did a magic job. So here we go, I'm gonna take the blade out of this one. And why do they call it a trying plane? First of all, we will go through the, the theory Jack plane, trying plane. You see one is a little bit longer than the other. Now in Salomon's book, he has this page. And it tells you all about tells you all about the different planes and particularly in timber planes. Well he, he does everything. It's, it's, it's a great book. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put a link to Amazon to this book after the, I finish the show. Because this is something, I bought this on Amazon myself, and this is a fantastic book. Don't, don't buy it yet. Or if you do, if you want to go and search for it, jump onto one of my links. Open up the show more below, and go into Amazon through one of my links, because the show will benefit a little bit for it, and that's, that's nice, you know, it helps me cover the costs. So I will put a link for this book as well after the show after the show for the American site because I know that they've got it. So you need to search for Dictionary of Woodworking Tools and just write Salomon, S-A-L-A-M-A-N. Oh, as I say, I'll put a link there. Uh, what do we got here? All right, so now the planes. I'm going to work on the jack plane. The trying plane, we know it's a trying plane because of the length. The length is 22 inches, which is... 560 millimeters, close enough. Now, in the book here, uh, 22 inches from the Nicholson 1812 Holt Zapfel 1847, we're looking at 22 inches of trying, and also the Sheffield list of 1910 is a trying plane as well. Now, if you are into the metal planes of that length, the Spears 1845 and Norris 1900 are jointing planes of that size. And so is the Stanley Bailey of that length, 1870 and also 1960. 
but this is where there, there were no, sorry, the longer jointer planes in, in the Nicholson 1812 and Holsat Fully in 1847, they're 30 inches and 22 inches. So they're another eight inches longer than this bad boy. Now I've got a number six here. And I'll give you an indication as that's a number six Stanley made in Australia. And this one was given to me. And it is, there we go. You can see the difference in the length and hence the Stanley jointer is, is shorter than this. And they say, you know, oh. but that was back in the day where these guys, and this guy in particular is my great grandfather, that's um, out, uh, Arthur there. They're the guys that had their right arm with <laughs> a massive muscle and their left arm was, you know, just a spindle with thing that would follow along because they're pushing away with this arm here oh, like a fiddler crab. Anyway, I'm waffling on. Let's get into doing something. Are you enjoying this kind of stuff, guys? It's, I, I try and bring you as much variety as possible. So that's enough for Salomon. We'll put him over to the side there, or the stacks are there. Put the keyboard out of the way. And I can put these hand planes down like this on my bench. I'm going to do a little plug on the Stanton bench because it's timber and also because it has the cushion strip on it. So those blades aren't actually touching the surface. If I was on the laminate over there on the, on the rest of the bench, I would of course put them down like that on their side. Okay, now we're going to muck around with the joint. Of course, the blade on this is absolutely shocking. To take the blade out, you hold onto the wedge and this part here is the wedge and then the blade together and you hit the end and that's it, done. Out it comes. And this one actually had a shim in it. I don't know why he's put a shim in there, but it's there. So I'll pop that to the side. Now, there's the blade. I'm going to, and there's the wedge. So that's the wedge that holds the blade in. And there's the blade. And it's got a brass nut locked into the back of the backing iron. So I flip her over and I'm going to undo that. So that's they're the days where they couldn't really tap a thread into the steel in the backing iron as well. So they put that brass nut that's rounded over. Peter, a number eight Stanley is about 24 inches long if memory serves. Yep. Okay, so Bob Macker, an Aussie number six now, they are rare these days. You got one yet? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You're starting to lose me. What, in sound? Give me a second. I'm... Batteries are fine. I don't know why, why you start. Is anyone else having trouble with the stream or is it okay? I'm going to uh, switch this over. Now, the reason I'm going to use this and the Sorby is because the Pro Edge... Um, it gives me a flat grind. Now looking at this, this has had a flat grind before. Thanks, Peter. Excellent. Okay, now it's a stinker. The blade has been, been abused over time. The one in the trying plane is absolutely beautiful. Uh, loud and clear on ADSL. Thanks, Paul. Reception fine. Okay, good. So I'm going to... There's, there's big chop outs in here, but we're going to clean the face of the blade up first with the brass wheel. And I will give you a warning. Um, the video is a bit fuzzy. Okay. There you go. I don't know. Maybe it's your own connection that's, uh, that's slowing you up. All right. So what I'm, I'm give you a warning with this video. When I start my grinder up that's got the brass wheel on it, we're going to get vibration because one of the uh, wheels is out of balance. So it's... Uh, just unlucky. So what happens when that gets out of balance? It vibrates through the floor because I'm not on a concrete slab, I'm on a timber floor. This camera here, this bad boy, is going to do a little bit of a twitch and what's going to happen is it's going to uh, 
be like the, uh, the twilight zone. It's going to be in and out a little bit. So put up with it. Here we go. I'm going to switch over to that camera there and see what you think. All good? So you'll still see me up in the corner, even though I'll have my back to you over here. And this is the brass wheel, and we're going to clean this up. Now, very important. This is an area, because I'm using brass wire, it's very important to throw all the safety gear on. I'm going to, I don't want bits of brass going into my hand. I don't want to swallow them, and I don't want them flying into my face. And I may as well have the earmuffs on. Well, these are the eye muffs, as you, you're well aware. So I'm going to throw this gear on. <sighs> Here's a tip as well. When you store a face mask, don't store it that way up because all the dust from the air will just drop into there and your first breath you take will be rubbish. The other thing is, apart from my hair going everywhere, I tried to get a haircut the other day, but he was shut. That's my excuse. The other thing is... Um, when I put this on, you're not going to hear me talking much. You'll hear me, but it'll sound muffled. Okay, pull that tight. This one back there. Um, gloves on. Oh, dear. So how's everyone's week been? Is it all good? These on, around that way. Okay, now get ready for this thing to start wobbling everywhere. See what I mean? All right, let's give it a bit of a clean. Now you've got to be careful that you don't get the glove too close because it'll grab it. That's why I've turned from one end to the other. There we go. I'll switch it back to the other camera for the moment. Give me a second. So there you go. That's, that didn't take too long. And we've now got the blade a whole lot cleaner than it was when I took it out. Now, you'll notice that I didn't really work the end with the brass brush because I want to do that with the diamond plate or with some emery. I think I've mentioned before, the end of the plain blade on the bottom is not as crucial to getting in that dead flat, uh, like the whole back of the plane. We need the area across the, the end there, right on the tip, we need that flat. Because the difference between that and a chisel 
is I don't do anything called pairing with a plain blade. So if, if I, um, I need to get that flat so that the intersection of the bevel and the back is, gives me a perfectly clean line, but it doesn't matter if the back is just tipping in ever so slightly. If it was a chisel, yeah, you've got to spend a whole lot more time. You've got to get the whole thing flat so that you compare with it. But because this is in beveled down, I think, on this one, because it's in a blade, in a plane, it doesn't matter. So I need to get this square, and we're going to do that with a pro edge. Let me have a quick read. Um, Vice prior to me deciding which gauge to buy. Fine, I didn't get the rest of that. Uh, but you can shave with it. Uh, notice Dave's rack. Uh, that's the old one. That's my. That was my prototype. Um, so this is this is my prototype rack, and it was the lead up to doing the good one, which is on the wall over there, which you're not seeing yet. <laughs> so you thought you'd you thought you stuck around the edge a little bit there, Wayne. Okay, what's the next thing? Um, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring the pro edge over onto the bench here. Now I have a fitting on here that Derek made, which which is fantastic. I'm going to switch this camera around. We're not going to have the vibration issues that we just had before. And I need to plug this in. And David, I don't think I've thought this through enough. I need to get a little extension cable for that one. Unless, of course, I can plug it in there. wonder if it'll fit. Will it reach? Nope, it won't. Give me a sec. <sighs> Talk amongst yourselves. And I'm not going to spin the camera around so you can see where I went because it was just down the other end of the workshop. Um, I've got to tell you, the new rack is fantastic. It, it saves, economizes on how far I walk. And the thing with these things, try and plug all your connections in prior to putting it into the PowerPoint. Now, it's these silly little things that we get really complacent with. Turn it on. There we go. That uh, turn around and bite you. One day you won't be thinking quite well enough and something will happen to you. Now I've got that there and I'm going to switch cameras again. Need cash for hair cutter, indeed. No shop sign. <laughs> oh goodness. I'm in trouble, aren't I? How's the time going? We've got plenty of time, half an hour. I'm hoping that we've got one or two people watching. There we go. Shop sign. For those who don't know, is one of my great, well, so one of my granddaughters made this for me. And she's very interested in carpentry. She's doing it, uh, joinery, sorry, woodwork at school. Turn that off and put it there. Can you, no, the Sorby's right in front of it. There you go. Can't do better than that. I, can't, I just can't do better than that. All your power hangs from the ceiling. Smart move. All right. Now, with this, one of the great things about my little bench is I can slide that in there. Like so. Unlock that down. Let's switch over cameras from there to there. Now also, hopefully, we won't have any focus issues today. So you can see I've, I'm holding that down on that side. I'll slide this one in from the other end as well. Come on, it's catching on something there. This is one of the older style. And it's mucking around on me a little bit. There we go, that's got it. Okay, got it. 
Now you might see, oh, I'm going to put this around the other side because otherwise I won't be able to show you the fantastic thing that Derek made. See this here? This looks after that pigtail. Let me undo this. I'll move that right out of the way. Take it off. It might, might sit there. No, I do have to put the, the other clamp on in a minute. But this pigtail is for the, um, the buffing mop to go on to. And they say, never leave, the Sorbies say, never leave this on the machine uh, if we're, while you're using the belts. Well, Derek is fantastic. Look at this. This has got three little magnets in it. He 3D printed this. And now that's protecting me. And does it work? Sure does. So this isn't spinning. That's just sitting there. It's magnetized itself onto the guard. Well, it's holding on by the magnet. There we go. I love it. Now, I've got a 60 grip belt in there. The chart down here tells me, let's see if I can bring this in and maybe up a little. I don't know why that's all happening. About there. Oop, that's covering my clamp rack just nicely. <laughs> All right. All right. So I've got this set at 20 degrees, which they say here, main bevel angle for bevel edge woodworking chisels, softwood bevel angle for parting tools. Uh, maybe I should go down to the next one. Honing angle for bevel angle chisel softwood, main bevel angle for bevel edge chisels, hardwood and bench plane irons. I need to drop it down to 25 degrees. So there's a little clamp around the side here. And this guy here, will release and I move it to 25. The thing I like about this is there's a whole heap of holes, whole heap of holes, that doesn't sound great, but anyway, there's a heap of holes around the back here that uh, get the setting right. See just here? So all of these holes on the list at the front tells you what to do. I'm going to put my hand over the camera until I get that back in position so you don't see. Oh, you saw a little bit of my clamp rack. No, that's no good. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Don't worry, it's coming. You'll, you'll enjoy it when it actually hits. And I'll go to this one so we can see me from the front as well for whatever reason. Some people tend to like that. So I, 25 degrees. I have the um, I have the 60 grit zirconian belt in there. I've got the 90 degree uh, guide just here, and you can see the angle is almost. I'll tell you what, that's so close to that is it's 25 degrees. That's what this has always been sharpened at, but it's very much rounded over. Now, because we're doing iron filings, I'm going to put. The dust mask back on again. And I did say I was going to put, put the cover on there. Slide this along. Got it. Tracking all right. It's tracking very well top and bottom. Here we go. The bevel facing down, of course. It's pretty quick. And can you see that? This is why I don't use the grinding wheel on my bench grinder.
I've got a big nick just here that I've got to remove. Looking good, nearly there. Now I'm moving it backwards and forwards very slowly. But normally I just work it in one spot, then work in another. But see, you couldn't normally do that. A little bit more in the corner and you can see there's a nick just here. Now it is starting to get warm now, I'm removing a fair bit of metal, but I can still do that. And there's no blue, there's no bluing at all on there. It's just amazing, this is a great machine. Take this off for a second. I just noticed one of the comments there. Why isn't the metal getting hot? This is not a grinding wheel. So that if I was doing this on my grinding wheel, I'll tell you what, this would be blue and I would have lost all of the hardening out of it. This is, it's just, this is a great system. Um, this is very quick. I do like this and I also like the, the slow speed water stones for doing the backs the back of these things i do that on the side of the water stone i don't i did have a try at trying to do it on on here using the backing plate but it, it was disastrous it was no good angle grinder sorry um bench grinder <laughs> did i say angle grinder i'm sorry okay so that, can you, you can't see any blue on it. There's no blue on there whatsoever. Right, I'm going to get my square out of the cupboard because I want to show you. I had a couple of people say to me, Dave, that they, I can't get, um, I can't get my chisel square using the Sorby system and I don't understand. I don't understand why. Maybe maybe this isn't isn't one hundred percent square, but I've I've never had an issue with it. There is a little bit of movement there just to allow it to track backwards and forwards. But if you're when you're using this, I always push towards the top. I don't I don't favour that way. I favour that way. And I tend to have a really nice square edge. Let me have a look here. You, you tell me what you think. Um, I don't know if you're going to see that very well, but it's coming up pretty fine. I'm, I'm very happy with that. That might be easier to see. It's very square as far as I can see. All right, now, I, as I said, it did get warm, but it didn't get really hot. See, so there's no, no trick photography. That's, that's how it is. May, maybe not. 
why isn't the Stanton bench available in the USA? The reason being, and I told everyone this on the show, I couldn't get product liability insurance in the States. Anywhere, in this, anywhere else in the world, not a problem. But you guys are litigious. You, everyone wants to, litigation everywhere. And so most insurance companies, they just pull back and say, you know what? Anywhere in the world except for the States, we'll cover you. So I had to count it in America. Sorry. I'd love to sell them in America. And I'll tell you what, the person, Luke from TBDCNC, had set up and everything was going fantastic. And it was really a bad day for him when I told him, I said, Luke, we can't do it anymore in the States. All right. Stephen Warbank, it's the low speed of the belt that keeps the blade cool. Thank you for that, Stephen. All right, well, I'm going to keep on until we get this down. And then I'll switch through the belts as well. And we've got a really nice edge on it. And what I'll do is I'll show you how to set it in as well. Give me a second, we'll turn her on. It's okay. Turn her off. Oh. A little bit of drama, but nothing that we can't handle. Oh, I'm so, so close. I'm not going to stop. I've got a little nick, a little roll off on the corner there, but with a jack plane, it doesn't matter that much. Most jack planes are rounded off on the edges of the blade. The reason being, it, when it's doing a ploughing, because this is for a rapid removal, it doesn't leave flat slots, it kind of leaves dips, so it doesn't tear. Maybe long. Beautiful. My clamp was just touching the side there. Okay. That's going to do me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch belts, get out of the 60 and drop down to a 120. Yeah, it's such a shame, you know, that we have Got a fantastic uh, bench here, dropping stuff all over the place, David. And what happens? All the legal beagles get in the way. You know, it's, it's frustrating. Doesn't take long to change the belts. I better get a couple and bring them down. What have we got? I'll bring them all down so you can have a look. Just for people that haven't seen uh, what I've done with the Sorby stuff. Aluminium oxide is probably their, you know, their base model, their economy model. will do everything, but it doesn't have a lot of life in the belt. It will wear out pretty quickly. Uh, when Chris Pouncey, if you're familiar with Chris, he comes out and does the woodwork, uh, wood turning tours in Australia and New Zealand and around the world. Uh, he told me, he said, Dave, just get the ceramics. They're, uh, these ones give you the best overall value. They, he said they last a long time, but they only come in a 60 and a 120. And he doesn't care about anything else because he's wood turner. <laughs> he's had people say to him, Chris, how do I sharpen a bench chisel with the Pro Edge? And he says, I don't know, never done it. <laughs> he's blunt that way, isn't he? So that's, that's it put back on. And before I put anything on, I'm going to see it's tracking. Pull to the left a little, but I'm not concerned about that. 
to adjust it over on the other side here, there's a couple of levers and things. And I show you how to do all of that um, in a video. That's tracking fine. Just as long as it's not running into this plate here or up the top here. It could, that'll be fine like that. I don't want to adjust it because I don't want it to be set for one belt and not the other. So it has that little bit of play there. We'll put the uh, cover back on. A lot of people will be tempted not to not put the guards on and I'm not here to promote that kind of activity. Um, I, I like to put the guards on. Um, Sorby unit set angle position is a bit off the mark. The angles are off compared to the other set angle guys I use. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, that's a 120 grip belt. I'll put the, this on again. The advantage, of course, with whetstones is you don't need to wear all this stuff because there are no filings coming. It just stays all in the pool of water. But as I say, you're not going to get the speed that this thing does it at. That, that's, that's the big thing. It is quick. Slide this back in. Beautiful. And that, and that, and that. Well, I didn't have to visit that long, did I? Nearly done. A little bit more. That's that belt finished. I'm doing what, so that was the 120. I'm going to go to a 240 is the next one. I'll just leave the face mask on. 240 grit is the only one I got is the 240 is the aluminium oxide. And again, the direction the arrows are going. I'll check tracking. Beautiful. What do you think of this little thing? I love it. Derek is such a clever fella. Now, I don't know if he's got them or if John might have them on the Yellow Box Shed. It's yellowboxshed.com.au. He might have them there. Or they might be running around saying, Dave, what are you doing? We haven't got them on the site yet. Come on. <laughs> okay, again, look at that. So now we're going to hit it with the 240. I have to be careful with this one because it will heat up quickly now. So that's just looking beautiful. Done. Now I'm going to go to 600. Yeah, John, you keep on getting sick, buddy. You know, you've just got to stop that. I mean, everyone's, everyone's over it. <laughs> I'm sure they're not over it as much as you are. Okay, the next one is called a Trizact belt. I'll take this off. This one's called a Trizact belt, and I don't know what they're made of. Maybe it's Trizact. These are done by 3M, these belts, and there's no direction on them either. So you can go either direction. 
So they're a pyramid block pattern is what they tell us. So this is 600 grit. And now we're really in the area we've got to be careful that we don't burn. Because these things are polishing now really more than doing a whole lot of cutting. So as I say, the 240, how nice is that? You know, from what it was when I first started. Um, and also, if I was doing a whole heap, like if I was like Peter Woolworth and doing sharpening, I would have everything lined up and I'd go through one grit all the way through on all of the tools. So I'd have chisels and playing blades all over the place. 60 grit, bang, 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 bang. Change the belt. 120 grit, bang, 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 and so on and so forth. I'm going to check the tracking. That looks good to me. Put the guard back on. Now I'm trying to keep my eye, <laughs> so are you John, I'm trying to keep my eye on the chat at the same time as doing the demonstrations. And so feel free to keep on throwing comment in. I will try and catch it as I'm going. So you'll see me in the top, top image. Where is it? There. <laughs> and also you're getting the close up of what's happening here. All right, that, 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 and bring the clamp back in to hold it. Lovely, and the respirator. You know, it's, it's one of those things with the respirators, you, you tend to think, oh, do I really need to put it on? I'm only doing a little bit. I'll tell you what, I, I, I thought that the other week, and I left it off when I was doing a little bit of sanding, and I paid for it for the next four or five days. It was only a little bit of sanding, and then, and Vicky was all concerned. She said, oh, you got a cold. It's not like you to get sick. And I said, oh, no, no, no. And then I confessed. And she said, well, I've got no more sympathy for you. It was all self-inflicted. <laughs> there we go. I've got to be careful not to stay on this one too long. You're not going to be able to see that as much as I can here. But that, that's it. I don't do any more with that one. That is absolutely beautiful. That's that belt. This is so quick. So 600, now we're going to go to 1200. And we don't really need to go more than 1200 because you know it starts to get to a point where it's... I have a 3000 as well, but... There we go. I have them written on there on the inside because there's no markings on these. So I've just written 1200 there. You may not be able to see it. Again, no direction. Check for tracking. Oh, it's on the inside. That's something you've got to be careful of. I did that on purpose. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to go there, there. And there. See, that's sort of mean. You get complacent. Check for tracking. Beautiful. Okay, that 600 is really meant to be a surface conditioning belt. As you can see here, they can be used for sharpening, followed by another type of belt, abrasive, to get the to get that to that edge completely. Okay. Jesus, three sheets of. Uh, yeah, good on you, Ron, but uh, I think you'll find that it's going to take you a whole lot longer if you're doing a heap of them. And it depends on what you're after as well. I'm taking it all the way through just because I know there's a fair few people out there who, you know, think, like, like it to be extreme. But a lot of people will take the 600 and stop. Here we go. Now this is the last one I'll go to. 1200 is going to be fine. Done. There you go. That's absolutely beautiful. I didn't put the clamp back on. All right. That's enough for the sharpening. What I will do now is put the mop on. Bring it around a little bit to there. Slide this down onto there. 
I'm going to have the mop there and I'm going to just run it underneath. I've got to put some polish on it. And I have it here somewhere. There it is. So this is a honing compound. I'm going to dose it up. Turn that off. Whoop. Lights. Give me a sec. That's the automatic switch in here that turns it on and off. I'll bring this around to there. And you might be able to see it just a little bit easier. Again, this is going to make it look a little bit green. So I use it to create that last angle a little bit underneath. Now, an important thing just there is you don't, when you're doing the back, if you're going to do the back like I just did then, see how good that is. If you, if you tip the blade up too much, what's going to happen is what you're going to do what's called rolling the angle. You're going to roll the edge off it, and so you won't have an edge at all. You want to see how sharp it is? As I say, this is this is never been out of that plane from Arthur, who died ten years before I was born. Look at that! Absolutely beautiful. Done. Magic, absolutely magic. I'm going to switch over to the main camera now because we're nearly time to go. to there and move this one out of the way and I'll pop the machine off disconnect it get it out of the way there we go now that was not a video to promote that machine I just show you the way that I do it and I do give equal time to the Triton that I have. And again, Triton or Tormek or Shepak or, you know, uh, Record, who, whoever's whetstone you get, they're all going to do the same job. It's just that the Tormek is at the top of the tree. If you're doing it professionally like Peter does, get that. If you're doing it in your shed at home and you're very anal about things, get the Tormek. If you're... Uh, Happy just to cruise along and sharpen your chisels. Get get the get the Triton. The Triton is a great machine. Uh, it's and it's you know half the price. The motor's not as strong. It's 120 watts instead of a 200 watt. The Tormex got a 200. It's just you get what you pay for. And if you need the Elite, grab it. If you don't need the Elite, like it's if you need a Mercedes or a BMW, and that's what you'd have to have. And you can afford it get it if you need a holden or a ford and that's all you need get it you know they still do the same job they get you from a to b just different styles of comfort <laughs> if i can put it that way now let's try and put this back in and see if we see if it works before i shut the show down there's the blade into the backing iron and tighten them up there Tighten that up, put the shim back in that Arthur had. And how I do it is I leave the plane, which sorry, sorry, we're gonna move that out of the way. I leave 
the plane on the timber surface like that. And make sure that's all good, which it is. It's just it's twisted a little bit as I tighten it up. Good. And that is so square. Oh, that's it's beautiful. All right. Now we put this in with the screw down because this is a bevel down blade or plane, I should say. Put that in until it touches the bottom. I've got my finger against the blade, holding it in against the back of basically the frog, if you want to call it the frog. I've moved a little bit, sliding the wedge in after it. Okay, so the wedge is in. Next time for clamp. Um, more ideas to add. Okay, so we need pictures of clamp racks, don't forget. So what I'm doing, I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to tap that wedge in a little bit to get it nice and tight. Then this is best done by pure daylight. I'll try and struggle through here with artificial light, but I don't know how it's going to go. So now I can tap the blade ever so slightly and that is, that's perfect. Uh, you want to see how it works? Let's see if I've got a piece of wood. Um, surely I've got a piece of wood kicking around here somewhere. Give me a second, I'll grab one. There's a piece of pine, that'll do. So I'll put it in the bench. Move that. Put my clamps. Come in from either side. I'll switch the other camera on while I'm doing this part because you might be interested to see this bit. Give me a sec. Sorry, we're going over time. Vicky's going to get me. Um, that one. And up just a touch. That's okay. Switch it over. There. Okay. So you can see here I've got the timber ready to go in. And the other end. Done. Let's see if it works. I'd say that's a yes. Now remember the jack plane is designed for cutting coarse, you know, getting material down quickly. The trying plane is a different animal. This is the trying plane. See the shavings I was getting out of that? And that, my friend, is very straight. And that is going to do us for today. I'll switch over to the other camera again. Yep. There we go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the show, guys. I'm sorry I went over again a little bit. Keep on watching. Keep on coming back. Um, get those pictures into me of clamp racks. I really do want to see them. And I'm going to try and get a haircut soon. I went down on Friday to get one and the barber was shut. You know, didn't say anything on Google, you know, what's happening. I don't know. What do you do? Let me have a look down here. Intro and text. Thanks, Dave. Thanks so much. That's fine. Robert, thanks, Derek. Uh, John, John Masters. Um, John. Time, don't both me. I, I, I've got to find what's happening in the, in the chat a little bit further on. But as I say every week, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you think the show was worth it. If you didn't think it was worth it, well, don't do it. But don't hit the thumbs down. You know, that's just annoying. <laughs> um, and, and, and I am clearing the shows after a week and they're going over to my second channel. So subscribe to the second channel and don't forget to ring that bell beside the subscription sign. So down here somewhere, down below, you'll see there's a, a bell and a subscribe button. Click that 
and you'll get noticed. Or sorry, you'll, you'll be notified, I should say. Subscribe to this channel and do the same thing for that. And then maybe uh, if you've rung the bell, you might have got a notification. I'm not sure. I've got to research that a little bit. But if you can, that'd be great. Uh, that's about it. Share the channel around. Let your friends know as well. Uh, let's look. Did you see April Wilkinson just got a million subscribers? Good honor. I think that's fantastic. Big round of applause for April. And uh, she's done it tough in, in a man's environment. And she's put a whole lot of guys to shame as to what she can do. She is out there. And congratulations, April. Uh, Ron Polk needs to get a haircut like me. <laughs> and and uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Uh, be nice to each other and look after yourselves. And I shall see you next week. Bye.